The battleship Iowa, the third U.S. Navy ship of that name, was laid down at the New York Navy Yard on June 27, 1940, launched in 1942, and commissioned in 1943 under the command of Captain First Class McRae. On February 24, 1943, the battleship departed for a test voyage along the Chesapeake Bay and the Atlantic coast of the United States. On August 27, 1943, the ship was sent to Argentia to repel a possible threat from the German battleship Tirpitz, which, according to intelligence, was in Norwegian waters. At the end of 1943, the battleship transported President Franklin Roosevelt to Casablanca on his way to the Tehran Allied Conference. At the end of the conference, it brought the president back to the United States. On January 2, 1944, as the flagship of the 7th Battle Division, Iowa went to the Pacific Ocean, where it received a baptism of fire during the operation in the Marshall Islands. From January 29 to February 3, it supported Rear Admiral Frederick Sherman's carrier strikes on Kwajalein and Eniwetok Atolls and then strikes on the Japanese base on Truk Island. On February 16, 1944, along with several other ships, it separated from the task force to clear the waters of Japanese ships that had left Truk in a northern direction. On February 19, the Japanese cruiser Katori was sunk by a battleship. On February 21, as part of Carrier Task Force 58, Iowa participated in the initial strikes on Saipan, Tinian, Rota, and Guam in the Marianas Archipelago. On March 18, 1944, the battleship, flying the flag of the commander of the Pacific Linear Forces, Vice Admiral Willis Lee, participated in the shelling of Mili Atoll. Despite being hit by two Japanese 120mm shells, the ship received only minor damage. On March 30, it returned to Task Force 58 in support of carrier strikes on the islands of Palau and Wole. From April 22 to 28, 1944, Iowa participated in carrier raids on Hollandia, Itape, and Waikiki in support of army forces at Itape, Tanamara Bay, and Humboldt Bay, New Guinea. On April 29-30, 1944, it launched a second attack on Truk and on May 1, 1944, shelled Japanese installations on Panape in the Caroline Islands. At the initial stage of the Mariana operation, on June 12, 1944, Iowa was part of the covering force for aircraft carriers during attacks on the islands of Saipan, Tinian, Guam, Rota, and Pagan, and on June 13-14, it participated in the shelling of Japanese structures on Saipan and Tinian. On June 19, during the battle in the Philippine Sea, Iowa, as part of the linear forces of OS-58, participated in repelling four massive Japanese airstrikes, resulting in the almost complete destruction of Japanese carrier-based aircraft and then participated in the pursuit of Japanese ships, shooting down one Japanese torpedo bomber personally and another one shared with other ships. In July 1944, Iowa remained in the Marianas area, participating in support of airstrikes on the Palau Islands and the landings on Guam. After a month's break, Iowa departed Eniwetok with the Third Fleet on September 17 to support the landings on Peleliu. It then provided cover for aircraft carriers during airstrikes in the central Philippines to neutralize Japanese aircraft before the invasion of the Philippine Islands. On October 10, 1944, Iowa departed for the shores of Okinawa for a series of airstrikes on the Ryukyu Islands and Taiwan. It then participated in supporting airstrikes on Luzon on October 18 and General MacArthur's landings on Leyte on October 20. To prevent the capture of the Philippines, the Japanese fleet launched three attacks aimed at destroying the American landing force in Leyte Gulf. As part of OS-38, Iowa participated in repelling the attack of the central forces of the Japanese fleet, advancing from the Sibuyan Sea to the San Bernardino Strait. As a result of the fighting, the Japanese central forces were defeated and retreated. Then Iowa, as part of OS-38, participated in the interception of the northern forces of the Japanese fleet at Cape Inganya. On October 25, 1944, when the ships of the northern forces were within salvo range, a message arrived that the Japanese central forces were attacking a group of American escort aircraft carriers off the island of Samar. Iowa was sent to cover this group, but the escort forces inflicted significant damage on the Japanese ships before Iowa arrived and forced them to retreat. 
Throughout the ensuing Battle of Leyte Gulf, Iowa remained in Philippine waters, providing carrier cover for attacks on Luzon and Taiwan. In December 1944, Iowa departed for the west coast of the United States. On January 15, 1945, Iowa arrived in San Francisco for major repairs. On March 19, 1945, it departed for Okinawa, arriving on April 15. On April 24, 1945, it participated in supporting aircraft carriers that provided air cover for the landing of American troops on Okinawa. It then took part in airstrikes on the southern part of Kyushu from May 25 to June 13. On July 14 to 15, Iowa took part in attacks on the Japanese metropolis, Mororan, and on July 17 to 18 on the city of Hitachi. Since the cessation of hostilities on August 15, 1945, Iowa supported the operations of aircraft carrier formations. On August 29, 1945, as part of the occupation forces, Iowa entered Tokyo Bay and, as Admiral Halsey's flagship, participated in the signing ceremony of the Japanese surrender on September 2. On September 20, the battleship departed Tokyo Bay for the United States. Iowa arrived in Seattle on October 15, 1945, and in January 1946 returned to Japanese waters as the flagship of the 5th Fleet, serving in that capacity until March 25, 1946, when it returned to the United States. From March 1946 to September 1948, Iowa operated off the west coast of the United States, participating in training, exercises, and gunnery exercises as part of the Pacific Fleet. On March 24, 1949, it was withdrawn from the fleet. After the outbreak of hostilities in Korea, Iowa returned to the fleet on August 25, 1951 under the command of Captain First Rank William Smedberg. Until March 1952, it operated off the west coast of the United States, and then departed for the Middle East. On April 1, 1952, Iowa became the flagship of 7th Fleet Commander Vice Admiral Robert Briscoe and sailed to Yokosuka to support UN forces in Korea. From April 8 to October 16, it participated in combat operations off the east coast of Korea, supporting ground forces with artillery strikes on Songjin, Hungnam, and Koyo in North Korea. After Vice Admiral J. Clark succeeded Admiral Briscoe as fleet commander, Iowa remained the flagship until October 17, 1952. On October 19, 1952, Iowa departed Yokosuka for Norfolk for overhaul and training operations in the Caribbean. In July 1953, Iowa departed on a midshipman's cruise to Northern Europe and then took part in a major NATO exercise called Operation Mariner as the flagship of Vice Admiral Wolfridge, commander of the Second Fleet. At the end of the exercise and until the end of 1954, Iowa operated in the Virginia Capes. In September 1954, it became the flagship ship of the commander of the battle and cruiser forces of the Atlantic Fleet, Rear Admiral Libby. From January to April 1955, Iowa made an extended voyage in the Mediterranean as the first battleship permanently assigned to the U.S. 6th Fleet. On June 1, 1955, it departed for a midshipman's cruise, and after that it underwent a four-month overhaul in Norfolk. Upon completion of the repairs, Iowa participated in training voyages and tactical exercises, and on January 4, 1957, it departed Norfolk for the Mediterranean Sea as part of the 6th Fleet. After completing its deployment to the Mediterranean, Iowa took a midshipman's cruise to South America, and on June 13, 1957, it participated in an international naval review in Hampton Roads. On September 3, 1957, Iowa departed for the shores of Scotland to participate in NATO exercises called Operation Strike Back, and on September 28, 1957, returned to Norfolk, from where on October 22 of the same year it departed for the Philadelphia Navy Yard, where on February 24, 1958, it was withdrawn from the fleet, thereby becoming part of the Atlantic Reserve Fleet. As part of the 600-ship fleet program, Iowa was restored and modernized in 1982 to 1984. In particular, the ship now has launchers for 16 AGM-84 Harpoon anti-ship missiles, 32 BGM-109 Tomahawk missiles, and 8 remote-controlled reconnaissance drones, and some guns have been replaced. The upgrade also included the installation of new radars and fire control systems for guns and missiles, 
as well as improved electronic warfare capabilities. From 1985 to 1989, Iowa participated in various exercises in the Atlantic Ocean and flew a mission in the Persian Gulf. On January 20, 1989, it fired a 16-inch, 406mm, shell at 43.3 km, setting a range record for a 16-inch gun. In the early 1990s, the U.S. defense budget was sharply cut, and battleships were deemed uneconomical. As a result, Iowa was decommissioned on October 26, 1990. Iowa received nine battle stars during World War II and two during the Korean War. In 1989, during firing at the Fleetex 3-89 exercise, the powder charge of one of the main caliber guns caught fire and an explosion occurred. 47 sailors were killed. The causes of the fire were never reliably established, including because the scene of the tragedy was promptly cleaned up. The very next day the tower was completely cleaned and repainted, and pieces of equipment were thrown overboard. The Navy initially accused one of the sailors of committing suicide by igniting the powder, but later dropped the charges. Other investigations have pointed to a different range of possible causes. Firstly, for the purposes of the experiment, a prohibited combination of powder and projectile was used. Secondly, the powder used was highly sensitive to mechanical stress. The mechanical rammer of the gun pushes the projectile into the breech quickly and with great force, and the powder slowly, with little force. In the event of an error in inexperienced calculation or malfunction, the force of the rammer could cause the powder to ignite. The powder emits an ethereal gas that is highly flammable and can be ignited by a spark. This revelation led to a change in the Navy's position on the incident, and Admiral Frank Kelso, then Chief of Naval Operations, publicly apologized to Hartwick's family, concluding that there was no real evidence to support the claim that he intentionally killed the other sailors. Iowa Captain Fred Musali was heavily criticized for his handling of the matter, and as a result of the incident, the Navy changed powder handling procedures on its battleships. The incident remains one of the largest casualties of the surface fleet during peacetime operations. Iowa was decommissioned for the last time in October 1990 after 19 years of active service and was initially removed from the Naval Vessel Register NVR, in 1995 before being reinstated from 1999 to 2006 under federal laws that required storage and maintenance of two Iowa-class battleships. In 2011, Iowa was donated to the nonprofit Pacific Battleship Center in Los Angeles and in 2012 was finally moved to Pier 87 at the Port of Los Angeles, where she was opened to the public as the USS Iowa Museum.